The China numbers which came out over the weekend, extremely positive for the material space. Exports jumping by 9.9% in September and imports were up by 2.4% in line with expectations and also a reversal from that decline of 2.6% that we saw in the month of August. Rook, as you mentioned, iron ore imports were at a 20-month high. In fact, up 4.1% compared to the previous month and up 7.3% year on year. So it's good to see those strong volumes holding up. But if we break down that uh, exports number, but European exports were actually still down by 10.7 percent. U.S. exports did see a bit of an improvement up by 5.5 percent, but it was really the Southeast Asian countries which saw a pop in exports. We did see uh, an increase of 25.5 percent there, so that's really where that uh, number came from. And I guess there's a little bit of skepticism around whether that export number is sustainable, but altogether some good news coming through for our material space. If we have a look at the lead for our materials so it wasn't very strong. We saw the CRB uh, commodity index down by 0.7% on Friday and prices generally low on Friday as well. In London, we saw BHP down by 0.8%. Rio Tinto was down by 1.6%. And we saw the same type of losses in New York. The ADRs, BHP down by 0.4%. Rio Tinto down by 1.1%. We saw Tel Telstra ADRs down by 0.6%. And we saw... Um, we also saw Westpac ADRs down by about 0.8%. So pointing to a bit of weakness on the Australian market, we've just seen BHP coming online with a loss of half a percent. So that looks like it's going to be a weight on the Aussie market. The lead from the US was also negative. We did see a fall on Friday. Wells Fargo, one of the biggest losers, we saw that stock down by 2.6%. And that's an interesting one. It came out with its third quarter earnings report. And of course, this is important because this is a massive week for US financials where we'll see the likes of Bank of America, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, all coming out with third quarter, quarter earnings reports. And so far, it has been a bit of a disappointing earnings season in the U.S. According to the Thomson uh, Reuters numbers, there's been 11 negative outlooks and zero positive outlooks for the fourth quarter. So that's going to be an important one for our market. But altogether, the lead's a little bit soft, even though those China numbers uh, may help us to moderate some of those losses on the Aussie market today. Still, yeah, the, you, the bottom line is fundamentals have deteriorated from six months ago have they not in terms of the rebar where it's being priced at and a bit of a pullback despite those trade figures from China is that inevitably going to pressure our miners I guess there is a little bit of nervousness around China at the moment. The positive is that we have seen iron ore prices bouncing back. Even though on Friday we did see spot iron ore prices declining slightly, for the week we have seen prices lower. And certainly has been a rebound from those $89 uh, spot uh, iron ore price levels that we saw a few months ago. So altogether things are looking like they're stabilizing on a price front. On a volume front, we know that exports, uh, imports into imports from China are still looking quite high. Those iron ore imports uh, were quite impressive, a 20-month high. So volume's still very strong. What we are seeing is pricing weakness as well as a strong Aussie dollar, which has made it relatively difficult for our Aussie miners. But altogether, if we have a look at the leads, they're a little bit mixed for our miners today. On one hand, we have seen uh, commodity prices generally low on Friday. On the other hand, over the weekend, we've seen this extremely strong trade numbers coming out of China. This is going to be a massive week in terms of China numbers. Not only do we get GDP numbers, but we'll get a read on industrial production, retail sales, fixed asset investment. So no doubt there is going to be a huge focus on our miners. And don't forget the quarterly reports which come out this week as well. Rio Tinto will come out with its quarterly numbers tomorrow. We'll see hear from BHP on Wednesday and we'll also hear from Woodside Petroleum on Thursday. Yeah, Julia, I think the consensus for the GDP numbers out of China on Thursday is 7.4%. Do you think that, that that will scare the markets? Although that is consensus, it's certainly well below 8% where typically we talk about you know it needing to be above 8% because of the social consequences of that but even the 7.5% that's been mandated by the government itself for the growth rate for 2012. How do you think market will react even if it comes in on consensus? I think the problem here is Brooke over the last few years what we've gotten used to from China is really um, under promising and over delivering. They've come out with these uh, bottom numbers in terms of GDP growth but we've always seen China come out and exceed those numbers and this is really what we've gotten used to over the last five to seven years. The fact that we are seeing these numbers being downgraded, downgraded is a bit of a worry to the market and we have seen China committing to seven and a half percent growth for 2012. If we do see it slip uh, below that for the third quarter, I don't think the market's going to be too concerned as long as we get some signs that these numbers, uh, these weak numbers, especially in terms of manufacturing, are starting to reverse and that we are starting to see contraction in this uh, sector rather than uh, uh, seeing 
uh, see uh, expansion in this sector rather than contraction. So I guess in terms of China, the market is expecting to see a bottoming in growth of the third quarter. If we see further signs from here that the Chinese economy is weakening and in fact that we aren't going to be seeing a bottom in Q3 but in Q4, I think that will make the market nervous. So really what we want to see is some strength from China from here on in. The market expectation is that this is this is the bottom for China. The third quarter results, GDP growth of 7.4% and that we'll see an improvement from here.